for tuning in to Brought House Sports. I am your host, Emily Cheddar Dog Dillion. It appears that Deshaun Watson is still dealing with legal issues. According to Cleveland.com, the quarterback could go to civil court with Lauren Baxley seeking a civil court trial in Houston, Texas. 23 cases against Watson were settled and one case being withdrawn. Baxley is one such accuser who refuses to give up and will be represented by attorney Tony Busby. According to Mary Kay Cabot of Cleveland.com, Watson refused to acknowledge that he assaulted her. Busby has also represented the other accusers in the litigations last year. Regardless of the outcome of the case, Watson shouldn't be facing any further sanctions from the NFL because all accusations happened between 2020 and 2021. Last week, Wednesday, the Browns signed offensive guard Colby Gossett to bring the team to a 90-man roster needed for the upcoming training camp. Gossett started out as a sixth-round pick for the Minnesota Vikings in 2018, but pretty much spent his time on the practice squad. In that season, he signed with the Arizona Cardinals in October, where he played in five games with four starts and playing 88% of offensive snaps. The following year, he was on the New England Patriots practice squad before signing with the Browns practice squad. He opted out from the 2020 season due to the obvious dumpster fire that ruined everything that year, but returned to the practice squad in 2021. He got waived in August, but played for the Atlanta Falcons for two seasons, where he played in 31 games and started in five. He became a free agent and is back in Cleveland. In addition, the Browns signed safety Rodney McLeod last week and is a veteran entering his 12th season. Last year, McLeod started in 15 games with the Indianapolis Colts and clocked in at 96 tackles, 8 pass deflections, 1 fumble recovery, and 2 interceptions with 1 resulting in a pick 6. Prior to this, McLeod spent 2016 to 2021 with the Philadelphia Eagles, with all but his last season in Philly, with Jim Schwartz as defensive coordinator. In his career, McLeod made 689 tackles, 2 sacks, 11 forced fumbles, 9 fumble recoveries, 18 interceptions, 1 touchdown, and 60 pass deflections. Might I add as well his two NFL accolades, his first being part of the Super Bowl 52 Championship Eagles, and winning the NFL Players Association's Allen Page Community Award. The Browns made two signings of undrafted free agents, and to begin this, we'll begin with the April 29th signing of safety Ron Hickman from The Ohio State University. Hickman began playing for the Buckeyes in 2019, but redshirted that season due to an injury he received in high school. In 2020, he played on special teams for five games and finished the season with five tackles. The following year, he started in 13 games, made 99 tackles, two interceptions, one sack, and one touchdown. And in 2022, Hickman started in 13 games, where he made 53 tackles and got an interception. It will be interesting to see how Hickman will perform in training camp and competing for a roster spot against Rodney McLeod. If anything, he could be playing a rotational role. It felt like forever for the Browns to address this position, and it was a surprise that they drafted nobody for this need, but finally they've done something at linebacker. The second undrafted free agent signing I'll talk about is Mohamed Diabadi from Utah, with much of his time from Florida. Forgive my whisper ASMR, but Diabati did play for the Florida Gators from 2018 to 2021 before becoming part of Utah for 2022. In his college career, Diabati totaled for 228 tackles, 10.5 sacks, 1 interception, 2 pass deflections, and 4 forced fumbles. Despite the switch in year 5, his best season was with Utah, where he got 58 tackles, 5 sacks, 1 pass deflection, and 1 forced fumble. Diabati does need to work in zone coverage, but shines in man coverage with his speed and physicality. To some Browns fans' disappointment, the New York Jets have signed defensive tackle Al Woods to a one-year contract. This may not seem relevant to the Browns, but he did visit the team prior to the 2023 NFL Draft, but he left without a contract. Despite this, the Browns still could seek options for defensive tackle in free agency, or they have confidence in their pick in Siaki Aika. The problem that the Browns could have had most definitely would have been Woods' 12-year experience in addition to being a nose tackle. A true nose tackle, I should add. Personally, I feel this isn't a major loss for the Browns because the main focus for the team's offseason has been building depth in the roster with the narrow cap room that they already had. Yesterday morning, the Browns have unveiled the five semifinalists for the alternate dog logo contest and each of them have their own distinct qualities. 
My personal favorite has been option 5 because of its menacing appearance and several hidden meanings, including the references to the Guardian Bridge, uh, Municipal Stadium, and its spikes representing the Browns 8 AAFC and NFL Championships. The other semi-finalists include number 1, which is an upgrade from the 2015 Dog Pound logo, and is my second favorite. The rest are either a luchador for number 2, one that looks like a tribal tattoo for number 3, and number 4 being looking like a Hanna-Barbera cartoon that could just be like used for a Cleveland Browns center story, either in something from like Scooby-Doo or the Flintstones, or hell at this point the Jetsons. And before we go, it's important to watch the release for the 2023 NFL season schedules tonight at about 7pm Central Standard Time. So far the Browns won't be appearing in any international games and should have a relatively easy schedule so long as they stay healthy and play their cards right. Though this could also be subjective, since the Browns already have a regular season game against the New York Pack- I mean, excuse me, the New York Jets. The Denver Broncos could also be intimidating now that they have Sean Payton as their head coach, and the Jaguars as well being led by Trevor Lawrence. With the Ravens re-signing Lamar Jackson, uh, among other things in the AFC North, it would also be very competitive this year when you regard the Cincinnati Bengals and the Ravens. And thank you again for watching Brought House Sports. Once again, I am your host, Emily Cheddardog Dillion. Please like and subscribe and turn on the notifications, as I would greatly appreciate it. And it would also help me out quite a bit in the algorithms as well. Once again, I am your host, Emily Cheddardog Dillion, and I'll see you next time.